Hi, and welcome to the second edition of my Developer Diary series. And I wanted to first and foremost say sorry for the delay. I put up the first one in uh, January, and now it's already May, and I'm doing the second one. There will be much higher clip. I was just finishing up my documentary stuff, and that was taking all my free time. So hopefully we'll be going full blast on this for the next uh, well, foreseeable future. Um, but also I would like, before I start, to give a caveat. Um, I am a game developer. I've been in the industry since the mid-'90s. Um, I'm going to give you my opinion, but my opinion necessarily is not law. It is not the way that everyone does it. It's not the way that maybe the majority of people do it. It's only what I've seen and from my perspective as a developer um, during those years. So please don't take anything what I'm saying as gospel. Um, always get other people's opinion. I'm sure that if there are other developers are watching out there, they'll probably disagree with some of the stuff I have to say. And that's fine. I mean, there's many different ways to develop games. Um, and I could be wrong, and I could be right. You know, it, 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 a lot of it, some maybe, is just opinion. So I'm just trying to give you the best answer I can. And so let's take a look at some of the questions. First is, what does it take to break into the game development industry for example, what do you recommend people study? So, wow, this is a very complicated question because there are many different jobs in the video game industry. It varies widely in terms of what skills are needed to fill those various positions. There's programming or engineering, there's um, art, and there's also design. And then the fourth really is overlooked is uh, man management experience, um, which is you know managing a team no matter what you are, whether you're a McDonald's manager or you're managing the next uh, hit video game, really those type of skills are, are somewhat similar. But first and foremost, I think with in terms of breaking into the industry and what to study, um, it's most important to keep in mind is that something that Steve Martin said in an interview recently when he's talking about his uh, experiences of getting into the entertainment industry and he said be so good that they can't ignore you and that's very important is that you know you worry about who do you talk to or finding the right person or where you know to look but really it's about acquiring the skills and and showing that you have the skills through examples that you can submit to people that you're doing professional level work it doesn't matter that you're doing an entire game on your own that's almost impossible but you work on some aspect of the game that it has a wow factor to it that's going to get people excited and say, hey, I want this guy to work for you. But in terms of what to study, um, again, I'm an engineer, I'm a programmer. Um, first and foremost, uh, programming is not about languages necessarily. You, if you wanted to become a great novelist, which is equivalent to being a great programmer, you wouldn't say, which language should I learn to write in for a novelist, just as you wouldn't say, which language should I learn to program in. Programming is largely about algorithms. It's about knowledge of how computer systems work on a very um, algorithmic level opposed to a syntax level of say C++ or Java or something like that. Not to say that uh, knowing a language isn't important, but it's about the knowledge of computer science first and foremost. So when you go to, you want to go to the best computer science school you possibly can, MIT, Berkeley, Stanford, Carnegie Mellon. Um, there, I mean, you don't have to go to those necessarily, and there's programmers that never went to college. But again, as a rule, you're going to learn how computers work on a very fundamental level, and a lot of those skills translate into no matter what field of computer science you go into. Um, and that goes doubly so with video games because you are always looking to use the right algorithm um, to solve a problem. And that's going to make you a better game programmer, um, even when you're doing things that aren't game related in, say, a college. Um, and then also utilize the college resources as much as you can. Um, do as much on your own that is game related when you have free time. Work on a mod, um, like with Half-Life 2 or Unreal Tournament or... Um, you know, Doom or anything like that. Show people that you are adding something that's unique and interesting to the game and not something that's that really stands out. Again, be so good they can't ignore you. If you are aspiring 3D artist, I, mean, I think the digital art schools are actually maybe a better way to go. I'm not an artist necessarily, so take this with a grain of salt, but my experience in terms of how people got hired, the, uh, some of the higher quality uh, digital media centers are actually good places to, to get started. Again, be it's about quality over quantity in terms of your resume, really work on the things that you're doing in school to the highest level you can because that is how people are going to make a decision whether they're going to hire you or take a chance on you, especially if you're an up-and-coming you know, student, essentially, that's just graduating um, one of these programs. Um, again, quality over quantity. Um, and then there's also designers, game designers, which is a lot of people think that's what game development is, is thinking up ideas, but really those type of jobs are by far probably the least um, hired in terms of people with inexperience. You have to kind of work your way up 
through a company to have any type of decision making power over how the next game is going to be or adding different ideas. I mean, everyone can contribute to a game. Um, but again, modding community is a good place, creating your own maps, doing unique things, you know, integrating some scripting language, some programming skills, um, being able to create new art. I mean, these are all things that really the more um, cross uh, diversity of talent over cross disciplines, the better. Um, again, it's, a, it's about being passionate, about wanting to learn these things. These are not easy, easy ideas to master, and it takes a lot of experience. That's why it's so hard to break into the industry, because it's a competitive industry, and people are looking for people that can have proven to do good work. And you can do that in college. It just requires the extra effort. You have to get good grades, and you have to spend your time making um, whatever you may be working on. Just do it at the absolute highest quality level you can and bring that to a developer. Don't show the I did like eight different little flash games that basically show no um, higher level of skill or no polish. You want to have one thing that's really polished to the best of your ability. So that, that would be my advice. Um, you know, learn as much as you can through universities or other types of uh, programs and then also do as much as you can on your own and focus on something and do it as high as quality as possible. Uh, greetings, friends. It's me, Wayman29. Hey, Costa, I had a question about video games. I love the Need for Speed video games. And my question is, um, do game developers think about quality across the multiple platforms? All right, that's a good question. Why do uh, some versions of the same game suck on one console or PC system and are great on the other? And there's a variety of reasons for this. One, and first and foremost, is the fact that development teams are of limited resources. They have a budget. They try to do the most they can with that budget. A lot of the time, they're trying to do um, make a better game and not worry about it running on all platforms well, but just making a better game on one platform and then trying to get it work last minute on the variety of others before they ship the game or they ship it after the fact on, say, a PC. This is why I personally don't buy any console games that have been ported to the PC. A port is when they take the code from one console and, and make it run on another, essentially. And usually it's not a very elegant process. Um, sometimes it's outsourced to other game companies that specialize in this. That's to some companies specialize in Xbox games, and they'll take any game and make sure it runs on the Xbox. And those companies usually don't get paid on how well a game sells. So they basically do the minimum amount of work possible that the publisher or another developer will accept. And they'll be on their merry way with their uh, amount of money they make, regardless of the total number of sales of the game. So that there's a lot of reasons for that. And probably the final reason that gets kind of overlooked as is that console games don't have to scale. In other words, an Xbox 360 sold on the first day of its cycle is the same pretty much hardware-wise as the last Xbox 60 ever sold. A PC over the course of industry you know, is constantly changing. So you have machines, a game that needs to run a machine that's two years old, something that's current, something that's extremely high-end, that's cu most cutting edge, and the game needs to scale and take advantage of all those minimum amount of hardware and run at a minimum level, and then, but also at the same time support all the bells and whistles of all the new hardware, which is the reason, which is the majority of people that buy PC games, unfortunately. So that's kind of the reason why developers, you know, it's, there's a psychology there, you know, that, that, that getting it to run on one system is fun, but the more systems that you have to do, the less fun it is because it's just more mundane technical work and it has nothing to do with about creating a fun game, which is a reason why a lot of developers are in the industry to begin with. So some of it has to do with psychology as well, as well as budget. So that's my answer. The Iron Troll asks, could you give us an insider's look into the development of a game like Star Sonata? Yes, but I will do this next episode because this is um, going to be kind of a multi-part series and I won't even be able to cover all the aspects of what it takes to uh, develop Star Sonata and what goes into it and all the different parts that have to interconnect to make it a game that people can play. So um, I'll end it at that. I appreciate everyone's questions. Um, I'm definitely going to go back and uh, there's people probably posted like 20 or 30 questions um, and I will get try to answer most of them. Again, try to be as specific as possible, please. If you have more questions, don't hesitate or questions about the answers that I gave this time. Um, I, I'm happy to clarify or you know go into more detail if people have more further questions. So until next time, take care.